Good morning, Antioch. How y'all doing? Good morning, everybody. We still a little bit cold. I know it's cold out there. Us native Floridians, it take a little while to thaw out. But we came to encourage you today. Is anybody waiting on your change to come? It might be a change in your finances, a change in your health, but we're here to encourage you that God is able. So we hope you'll stand on your feet and join us as we sing that he is able. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that works within you. Come on, put your hands together. Oh, 
Hallelujah, those that are in the sanctuary that weathered the cold this morning, good morning. Those that are watching us by internet, that's snuggling up to your blanket this morning, good morning. God is able, hallelujah. How many know that he's able? Hallelujah, he is able. Hallelujah, no matter what your circumstances are, he's able to handle everything that concerns you. Hallelujah. The scripture told us this morning in our Sunday school lesson, he is so much able that we don't even have to fight some battles. Hallelujah. That the battle is not ours, is it? Brother Eric, is that what you told us this morning? That the battle is the Lord's. Hallelujah. He's able to fight for us. Hallelujah. God is so good. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we come before you this morning. We come with thanksgiving in our hearts. We come with praise on our lips this morning. We come thanking you, dear God, for bringing us and directing us into the house of prayer one more time. God, where we can come and we can find refuge. Hallelujah. A week that's beat us up, dear God, that we can come and we can praise you and give you worship collectively, dear God, that we can see our our brothers and our sisters and we can love upon them dear God we thank you for all that you've done what you continue to do this is the 14th day of our fast dear God we know that you're able to bring us through it we know that you're able to keep us strong dear God give us what we need even during this fast dear God hallelujah but we're denying ourselves hallelujah but allowing you to come in hallelujah do all those things that we thought we're impossible dear God you're doing it for us hallelujah you show us obedience and discipline dear God hallelujah we thank you for it dear God because it's you that directs us it's you that holds us in the hollow of your hands dear God it is you dear God that give our life purpose it is you dear God that do everything for us so we're here to praise you this morning hallelujah we're here to give you all the glory and all of the praise hallelujah we ask that you touch our pastor this morning give him a word dear God hallelujah strengthen him dear God in the mighty name of Jesus we thank you God we're gonna praise you we're gonna be ever so careful to give you the honor the glory and all of the praise in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. When we speak the name of Jesus, something happens in the room. How many of you are waiting on him and believe in the power that is in his name alone? In this season of fasting and praying and seeking God, are we willing to wait on his response? Hallelujah. When we speak your name, I want somebody to just say, Jesus. Jesus. Something happens. And if you believe in the power of his name, he will show up and show out, even on this morning. Something happens in the room Our hands go up We can't wait to see what you're gonna do When we speak your name Power is released We bow down before you Every demon has to flee Before we do anything else we call on you before we do anything before we do anything else we call on you we call on jesus show up show up show out jesus. move how you want to move move how you want to move you can do what you want to do do what you want to do what you want to do we call on Show up, Lord. show up, show up, Jesus. Move how you want to move. Move how you want to move. You can do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. We speak your name. We speak your name. Something happens in the room. Something happens in the room. Our hands go up. Our hands go up. We can't. We can't wait. 
to see what you're oh, gonna Lord, do Lord, when we speak your name. Power is really power is as we bow down, yeah. as we bow down before Come on. you. Every demon has to flee before before we do anything. Anybody got expectation on this morning? Anybody going to wait on him in this place? Hallelujah. Won't you say, show up, Lord. Show up, Lord. Show up and show out. Hallelujah. And move how you want to move.
wanna praise you. I wanna praise you, lift you up. Cause nothing else matters. I don't care what's going on. coming from Hebrews 11. I'll read the leader and you'll read the congregation. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, for the evidence of things not seen. Through faith we understand that the words were framed by the words of God, so that things that which are seen were not made of things which do appear.
but without faith is it impossible to please him. For that he is going to God must believe that he is in a reward of the word of them that diligently seek him. This morning's sin will be coming from number 162, Pass Me Not.
Pastor Jones, First Lady Jones, ministers, and Yonk family friends, and those watching us online, good morning. good morning. Thank you for joining us today. We are happy and honored you chose to worship with us. Our annual 21-day fast has started. The theme is, God is trying to tell you something with the subtext, Speak, Lord. The week three scripture comes from Psalms chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for unto thee I will pray. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. This Wednesday night is Super Wednesday. On January 24th, we will give way for individuals to share part of their journal for the 21-day fast. We will also be taking copies of scripts from members that would like to share part of their journals in a published scrapbook, due no later than February 4th, 2024, to be in publication. There will be an evangelism workshop sponsored by the Mission Ministry on Saturday, February 10th, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Antioch Event Center on 190 Oviedo Boulevard, Oviedo. It is a free event and the entire church membership is welcome to attend. Registration is requested but not mandatory. You can register at ambcevangelism2024.eventbrite.com. Media is looking to recruit new members. If you have a love for technology, video editing, photography, Photoshop, or any other digital media, the media ministry would love to have you. Please send an email with your contact info to media at antioch-mbc.org. Come join one of our small group Sunday school classes at 9 a.m. Adult classes are held in the sanctuary and via Zoom. Head, head to our website for the link. Children's Sunday school classes will be held in the classrooms only. Join us this Wednesday for a youth and adult Bible study. Bible study will be in the sanctuary and on Zoom. Head to our website for the link. As always, we ask that you keep our sick, shut-in, and bereaved families in your thoughts and prayers. Is there anyone that has celebrated a birthday since last Sunday? Yeah. Happy birthday. How about any anniversaries? Happy anniversary. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel at AMBC Oviedo. Have you downloaded our app? It's available in the Google Play Store and Apple Store. You can also download the app on your Amazon Kindle and on your Apple and Roku TVs. You can search for the app by typing in Antioch MBC Oviedo. Please create a profile and allow notifications to stay up to date with things going on at Antioch. Do we have any visitors today? If so, please stand. We are grateful and we are excited and grateful that you have come to be with us this morning. It is our hope that you experience the love of Christ and his presence during our worship. God loves you and we do too. Please remain standing so that our ushers can give you a visitor's card. Have a great day and a blessed week. Now we have a few video announcements and a brief update from Pastor Wolf. Good morning, Antioch. Thank you, thank you, thank you. On behalf of the Sharing Center and the Golden Saints of Good morning, Antioch. Thank you, thank you, thank you. On behalf of the Sharing Center and the Golden Saints of Antioch, we would like to thank you for supporting the third filler truck event held right here at Antioch on Saturday, January 13th. The event was a huge success. You filled two tr trucks, which means the groceries, utility assistance, and other resources will be provided for families in need. And some of the these resources will be utilized to help our 
very own friends and family. Good morning, Antioch. Thank you, thank you, thank you. On behalf of the sheriff, I just want to move your heart. It's all I want to do. I just want to stay in love and pour my love on you no matter how much the cost. I freely give it all to you. Your love made a way. Excited for Jersey Sunday, even though the Cowboys ain't make it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm rooting for the Bills because me as a Buffalo Bills fan, until they get knocked off, then I ain't rooting for nobody. <laughs> but I'm on the bandwagon for now. <laughs> but uh, just come up real quick to give you an update. Can you say rock the universe? All right, that's what we're going to do this upcoming weekend, amen? Next weekend coming up. So we've been praying. I've been seeing the weather. It looks like it's going to come from cold to God blessing us to have a nice warm weekend coming up next weekend. So um, we have gotten up to 44 people going on this event, amen? They have a very awesome lineup of Christian entertainers that will be there performing, and we have the rides and attractions to enjoy together. I just want to uh, let you know if you received an email, very important, I sent an email out last night, um, got one back, uh, and I've reached out to the person, and I've texted another person that I couldn't get through to the email. If you didn't get that communication and you were planning on going on this trip, you need to call me ASAP. Uh, to get that straightened out, amen, because that everybody I sent that communication means I have you registered as part of that 44 and able to attend this event. So if you ain't get that communication, you may not be going on this event, uh, but please call me. It's very important. Uh, we, uh, we'd like to see if there's anything we could do. Uh, we will try, but no guarantees. But that was we've been announcing it for a month and asking everybody to follow this process to register to be able to go. Uh, we're excited about the trip and going there. We're going to be here at 8 o'clock, and we're going to leave here at 8 a.m. Saturday morning. We're going as a group with the church. That's 8 a.m. Saturday morning, the 27th. I expect to be on the road no later than 8.30. I know sometimes we get to the here and we're waiting for somebody to pull up in the park a lot. Please. Uh, we want everybody to respect everybody's time, allow everybody to get to the parks and get settled in and have time to be there to enjoy it. Uh, there'll be a lot of people. It's a Saturday. There'll be lines. So we want to get there early, allow the young people to have fun and have time to uh, ride all the rides there. So the bus drivers extended us a time that they'll pick us up at 10. So parents will be back here by around, I ask you to be here by 1030, no later, uh, to pick up everybody who's riding with us that would need a ride back home. Um, tickets. I was hoping to have them by today to give out to some everybody, but Universal is processing and they have a time and process that they're going through, so I'm hoping to have those by tomorrow. I'm encouraging you to come out Wednesday night. We'll be here Wednesday, and I'll be here all day Wednesday into the evening. 
Uh, we'll have the tickets here in case you want to go on Friday. We're going. Some of us are already talking about going that Friday night. Again, it's a ticket that you can use through the whole weekend for all three parks. So if you want to go out Friday night, we want to have your tickets to you before Friday night so you can do that. So I encourage you, if you come out for Bible study, you get the best of both worlds. You get your ticket and you get the word, right? <laughs> Amen. So, um, but if not, we're going to uh, reach out to whoever is not here to get your ticket to coordinate to you need to pick them up from here uh, to make sure you get your tickets unless you just want to get them that Saturday um, if you're not going to go until you go with us. Um, I do thank everybody. We have a few, uh, about four chaperones uh, that will be with the younger people. Uh, the rest of our groups are young adults um, that will be attending the group um, the trip as well. Um, okay. All right, somebody was taking somebody text me an update about it to make sure I announced it. Um, so we're just going to uh, be able to insist that we have uh, help going forward. This was a, a lot to try to coordinate, and I'm just encouraging uh, people to come out. It's a blessing for us to all serve. It's a blessing for us to share in serving in the ministry. It's a blessing that we all share, and we don't want it to be a burden because we're not equally sharing the load. So we encourage you to come out and serve if you want to help out with this ministry with these young people. We are, have a lot planned, and it's a lot to do. We wanna, I want to have an event coordinator so I don't have to do everything with the event. I want a parent coordinator so I don't have to send all the information out to all the parents. We want a volunteer coordinator so I don't have to solicit your service. Amen. We want to have the ministry structured and organized and everybody sharing this load. So let's pray about that. Let the Lord put on your heart if you are, are interested in serving in this ministry. You don't have to do everything. If we get everybody to do something, we'll accomplish our goals, amen, to touch the lives of these young people. <laughs> amen. And I thank God for the young people today. I got a call. I've been praying for the Lord to send laborers into the harvest. That's, he said he'll do it, amen, and he, to pray for him to send more laborers. And I got a call from young people this week that are up here doing the announcements and doing the responsive reading. They're, so I, I praise God for them because I find out an answer to prayer. And we're going to continue to use them as well. And we want to lead by that example that they see us serving and it excites them to want to serve as well. God bless you. Let's say amen again. Amen. amen. Some good seats at the fr up front. Thank you, Camille. Thank you. Let's give him for those that's just coming in. We thank God for them. Amen. Today, again, we get a chance to our dedicate a, another baby to the Lord, and I'm always excited to get to do this. I tell people all the time that when I was born, you know, nobody dedicated me. They just said that's somebody's child. But now we get into the place where we are recognizing that these children are indeed a blessing from the Lord. Someone asked that, amen, Candace and Rick come with Scarlett Anna Lee. I got it right, amen, to come up and, Rick, you and Candace, just come and stand right here in front of me, right here and, now she's been dancing the whole service and clapping. <laughs> Now she's going to act like she all shy. Amen. Just just turn and face me. Just You guys just turn and face me like I'm going to marry you all again or something. <laughs> I'm reading from a, a passage in, in Mark chapter 10. Jesus, in, in fact, this is exactly where I'm preaching from too. But right before the sermon or the text that I'm preaching from, this incident happened. Jesus was just going about just teaching and preaching the word of God throughout Palestine. And he got to this place here where when he was doing this teaching, 
the parents of these children wanted him to touch them because he was healing people and he was doing all kinds of miracles. And when he, at this text, and I'm going to read it, it says, and they brought young children to him that he should touch them and his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer little children to come to me and forbid them not for such is the kingdom of God. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And the Bible says he took them up in his arms and he blessed them. And I don't think they're going to let me do that, so I'm just going to reach out and touch you. Amen. But imagine with Jesus as busy as he, as he was and his disciples thought that he was, had too much to do for these parents to have the audacity come up for him to break out his busy schedule to take time with parents and bring their children up for him to touch them. But the Bible says that when he's seen his disciples trying to prevent the children from coming to him, the Bible says the first time we see in Scripture, Jesus got upset. He got upset with even his disciples because he says, don't do that. He says, suffer them to come to me and forbid them not for such, that's right, Annalie, such is the kingdom of God. So I want to say to you, Candace and, and Rhett, it is your duty, therefore, to receive this child from God's hand and to teach her to know and to love God. It's not for me, Pastor Jones, I'm going to do what I do, but it's up for you, Candace and you read, they need to see you love God. They need to see that you have an interest in the things of God. It's going to go a long way because in the times we live now, we need some people. We need some people that know God right now. It's crazy out here. And y'all know I'm telling the truth. Not only that, but from your example, this child must learn how to pray. Especially you, Dad. Brett, you're tall. You're pretty tall. You're tall guys. But you know, when it comes to this little girl, special little girl, she's going to think you're the biggest dude in the whole world. And she's going to look at you, man, and think that my daddy can do anything. Special little girls, especially when they got a good daddy, they almost worship the ground. Yeah, sure, that's right. They pretty much worship the ground we, work, we, we stand on. And she need a strong dad that when things happen and these little crazy boys start to messing with her, she need to know I'm going to go home to my daddy. Amen, somebody. Amen. She needs to know that. And from your example, and Candace, God bless you. There's so many women that wish they was blessed with the privilege of bearing a child. God thought enough of you to let you carry this baby. That's how privileged you are. Let me tell you something about little girls, too. Little girls like to emulate their mom. And from your example, too, she got to see how mom handled things and how mom handle amen your husband see that because if she don't see it from you she won't know how to do it amen and she must learn from your examples to fellowship with christ now i ask you both candace and Brett, do you promise to pray for this child that she may grow in knowledge of god and in spiritual life y'all promise to do that pray for her and do y'all promise to train her in body, mind, and soul for the service and fellowship of God? Y'all promise to do that? Listen, the Bible says that children are a heritage of the Lord, which means that before God entrusted you, Red, and Candace with this child, that baby was already in heaven and alive. There are so many babies in heaven right now, God looking down on the precipice of heaven and looking to see who he can entrust those children with. And he counted you worthy. And Red, that baby was in you before it was in her. So the Bible says that he hold us men responsible. The Bible says for us, Father, raise our children and nurture the avenues of the Lord, which means the bulk of the responsibility lays at the feet and the lap of the men. Now, I'm going to ask that you bring up, amen, God and God, any godparents or godparents and grandparents, would y'all come up right now, homeboys, homegirls, everybody come up. <laughs> Amen. So y'all the God, so you are the Godparents. Amen. Now, 
what you, what you guys are saying, what you guys are saying, and God forbid, in the event that anything happened to Rhett and to Candace, are you saying that you're going to raise this child as if this child was your very own? Are you saying that? Did anyone coerce you to come up here and force you, put a gun to you, nothing like that? You guys volunteered to do this. Amen. Now I want to say this again to the godparents. We're, we're, grand, we're the grandparents. Grandmother. She want to tape, but somebody get her phone because I want to talk to her too. Because, you know, uh, us, 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 Marilyn, come around this way. Come around. You want to see it? Amen. Camille got it. She got your phone. She got you, Marilyn, right there. Just come around. She want to get a good picture on this side. Amen. Ray, Marilyn. I'm saying the same thing to you. Sometimes when we get to be grandparents, we said, you know what? I ain't raising nobody children. I'm done with my children. Y'all raise your own children. But you know what? Sometimes what happens, and we got people in this room today who can testify that they were raised by their grandparents. And I'm saying to you, God forbid if anything happened to Candace and happened to Rhett or happened to these godparents, would you all be willing to do it all over again to raise this child as if she was your very own? Amen. Brother Wolf is going to anoint her right now. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for this child. And we thank you, Lord, that we believe that the word of God says that children are heritage of the Lord, which means that God, she was with you before she was here with us. And God, now we dedicate, we give her back to you, and we say thank you. We don't know what your plans are for her, but God, we know you have one for her. We ask God you bless this child. Keep your hands upon her. Bless her parents. Give them wisdom far beyond years that they might raise her in a manner in which she'll grow up to be a woman of virtue. And God, and we thank you, Lord, for this privilege that we get to give her back to you. And thank you, Lord, for lending her to them. For God, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. We'd like to give you the certificate. Certificate of baby dedication. We hereby commit to raising this child. This is you all talking certificate. And I was about anybody gave me that. They ain't putting that ain't nothing on me. Scarlett Anna Lee from all in the nurture and admonition of the Lord on this twenty first day of January in the year of our Lord, two thousand twenty four, at Ann Arbor Mission Baptist Church. Pastor Jones, Pastor, I'd like to present this to you. Amen. And say thank you for letting us be a small part in this child life. God bless you. You may take your seat. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, Antioch. It's offering time. There are several ways to give. You can give online or through the church app. You can also place your offering in the baskets in the back of the sanctuary or place them in the drop box in the front of the church. Finally, you can mail them to the church at 311 East Broadway Street, Oviedo, Florida, 32765. Now let us stand to pray. Lord, thank you for allowing all of us to be here today. I pray that the offerings given will help to the growth of your kingdom. Lord, bless those who can give and those who can't. In Jesus' name, amen.
your mercy for us.
Let us stand for the reading of God's word, amen. Let's give a hand for this choir, amen. Our musicians, our ministers of music, we love you, we appreciate you, amen. Uh, we're getting ready to hear from heaven and our scripture reading will be coming uh, from the gospel of Mark chapter 10. And we're going to start at the 17th verse, and we'll end at the 22nd verse. Starting from the 17th verse in the Gospel of Mark in chapter 10, it says, And when he was going forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, and honor thy father and thy mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus beholding him loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. Amen. Preach, Pastor. Some of you are probably thinking I'm having a, I'm gonna have a, I'm having a sugar high because I brought my candy jar. But you'll know why I have it in a few minutes. My wife also brought me a, a vase too. So I'm just gonna use that as a prop, a illustration, in a few moments. But I want to thank God again for our choir. Let's give the Lord a hand for them. And I don't know if it was just me, but. But Jude, I don't know if you add another voice or something. Y'all sounded richer this morning for some reason. We thank God for it. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to the scripture that was read and you hear from Pastor Wolf. I want to thank God for all of you that come today to be with us today. I want to thank you that's visiting online. Uh, we've been trying to make it a practice to look in the camera and say to you, we appreciate you following us every week as well. And we thank you so much for supporting us in, in whatever manner, whether prayer, your financial support, or just giving us a word of encouragement. We want to thank you, too, for being a part of this ministry. Verse 17 says, And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him, as Pastor Wolf just read. Ask him, good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, and that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and thy mother. He answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth up. And we said last week he was probably at this time a young adult. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said to him, One thing thou likest, go thy way and sell whatsoever thou hast. Give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and take up the cross and follow me. He was sad at that saying, and he went away grieved. Notice, keep in mind that verse. He was sad at that saying, and he went away grieved. 
for he had great possessions. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, God, and we ask in Jesus' name that you would grant to me now the tongue of the learned that I might know how to speak this word in season to them that may be weary. This morning, awaken my ear that I might even hear as I learn. Help me, Lord, to hear you while I'm speaking. And help me to speak as you are speaking. God, if you speak to my heart, then, God, I can be assured that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight because, God, you are my strength and my redeemer. For, God, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Have you ever had someone to ask you to do something that violated or was in conflict with everything that you value? Talk to me, somebody. Have had anybody ask you to do something that violated or came into conflict with everything that you valued? I mean, this was you. And, but here is the worst thing about that. The person who asked you this was somebody that you cared for, somebody that you respected. And they were asking you to step out of bounds. They was asking you to come across the line. They were asking you to do something that messed with your conscience. And it also put your reputation in jeopardy. Come on, somebody. In our sermon uh, last week, we were, we talked about, or we took notice of this young man in, in this text. The young man came running to Jesus. He respected Jesus, had heard about this itinerant preacher. This preacher was, was beginning to be very popular at that time, and word was on the street that nobody spoke like him. He was able to shut down the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and all the scholars at that day, every time they would ask him questions, he were able to put them to silence. He wasn't just some anybody. He was very influential. And not only that, not only was he had powerful words, but he was performing miracles such as they had never witnessed before. So not only did he was powerful in his words, but he was also powerful in his performances and things in which he'd done, which gave him great influence. And when you see somebody who can back up what they're talking about, it has a tendency to grab your attention. Can I, can I just talk to anybody? But when the young man asked Jesus, he said, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? The young man was pretty well law. We described what and why they called him the rich young ruler. Not only was he young, the boy had it going on. He was driving probably Mercedes and, you know, this guy had it going on. He probably had a Hummy. I don't know. But the boy had it going on. And apparently, I believe that the boy was popular in that community. And so he come running. And the thing is about this, the young man came running. That was a sign of humility because somebody of his status don't run with, you know, so you've seen people that smell themselves. You can tell, you can smell them before they get on them. You can tell, they, they really think they're somebody. But this young man, he came running and he kneeled down before Jesus. What shall I do? Because he was used to doing stuff. We got so many people that tell you, you got to do this and do that, and do this in church before you can do this. God hasn't asked us to do anything but believe him. We've been saved unto good works. That when you get saved, nobody got to make you or ask you to do something. You'll be looking for opportunities to do stuff. I mean, good stuff. That's a part of our heritage. That's a part of being saved. Amen, somebody. I'm just talking to you. But Jesus' response to this young man was disappointing because he suggested to the young man to sell 
all of his possessions and give the proceeds to the poor. Now, he wasn't looking for that. Come on, y'all. He wasn't looking for Jesus to say that. And the disappointment of hearing Jesus say that suggestion was so great. That was to him to suggest that. It was so devastating for him to hear those words that this young man walked off, aiming somebody, and unwilling to listen to another word that fell from Jesus' lips. Can you imagine that? This young man was so disappointed in what Jesus said that he walked off and said, I don't want to hear another word you got to say. How many of us get mad with preachers? We just delivered the mail and you didn't like what you got in the mail. And you got mad with the preacher because it looked like he was picking at you or said something that you didn't like. Ask me how I know. I do that. I've done that before. But when I look at this young man in this text, when Jesus suggested to the young man, go and sell all your possessions, that was the last thing he imagined Jesus would ask him to do. To go sell all of my possessions? You mean to tell me as hard as I've worked? As much as I have done to get what I got, and you going to tell me to sell all of it? That was a, I mean, that was like <clears throat> mind-blowing. Because in Jewish culture, amen, having things were associated with being godly. So now Jesus tell him to go sell it all. But he that was rich talking about Jesus now, became poor that we might become. <laughs> the righteous God. So here was Jesus himself, know what it feels like to release everything that he had in order to do what God wanted him to do. So here was this itinerant preacher asking this young man, to sell everything that you work for, everything that you hold dear. Some of us, we hold dear to our titles. You mean to tell me I can't get nobody to call me doctor? Reverend or pastor or whatever your title is? He said, I want you to go put it all down. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're asking me to put down what I don't work hard for. Go sell all of your possessions. <laughs> One of my favorite State Farm commercials, I don't know if they're going to put it up. I love this commercial. That's one of my favorite commercials. That commercial, Larry, I love that commercial. I love Every time the commercial come on, I don't want nobody to talk to me at this point. The representative of State Farm, keep that up there for a minute while I, while I say this. And the quarterback of Kansas City Chief, Patrick Mahomes, is standing there. And y'all can see him standing near that chalkboard. After Patrick got their attention, he said, hey, hey, guys, listen up. He says, this season boils down to one word to which the State Farm representative proceeds to say, bundle Home and auto. <laughs> then as he said that, one of the players was kneeling there. They were like, they was listening with bated breath. One of the men starts singing. When, when he said that, he says, and counting his fingers, he says, but that's four words. Come on, somebody. The representative, not Pat Mahomes, but Pat, Mah Pat, Pat Mah what's his name? Mahomes. He says, but that's, that's four words. He says, not if you bundle them. <laughs> Pastor Jones, what they got to do with this text? I'll show you in a minute. When he said, not if you bundle them, 
he, he said four words, but he says it came down to one word. <laughs> Bundle, home, and auto. And the players, when he said that, it was so deep that one of the players went into, they went to a frenzy. He stopped backing up because he had said something so deep. Here in our text, something similar happens when Jesus tells the young man he liked one thing, but proceeds to say additional things he must do. Come on, y'all, amen. He said he didn't like but one thing. That he didn't have, no, number one, just, you, just, you just like one thing, and yet he proceeded to go on to say, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou have, give to the poor. Wait a minute, I'm talking about one thing. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Wait a minute. And come, wait a minute, and take up the cross, uh-huh, and follow me. Where's the one thing? It's one thing. If you do what? Yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all ain't, y'all ain't hearing this. When I, when I look at that, the one thing he liked, he said, go thy way and thou shalt have talked about he'll have. He had to bundle these things. Number one, he had to volunteer to do, I don't know if they're going to bring it up, just, just kind of bring it up. I got it on this screen. He had to volunteer to do what he was told. Nobody told him what to do. He says, go thy way. Then number two, he had to release or renounce everything he had for Christ's sake. He said, go sell everything thou has. I don't like that stuff. Three, he had to show compassion for the less fortunate. Give to the poor. Uh -uh, I got mine. Let them get theirs. <laughs> then number four, he must live a life of anticipation. Thou shalt have treasure in heaven. I ain't never had to wait on anything. I got mine. If I, if I say give me something, I got it right then. But now he's asked to live a life of anticipation. Number five, he needs to know. Wait a minute. Are you going to come to? You need to know following Christ will not be easy. Why? He says, come, and you better take up your cross and follow me. How many found out that following Jesus ain't easy? How many thought that when you got saved, it was going to be a piece of cake? But the minute that you decided to follow the Lord, all hell broke loose in your life. You, you, you know that the minute that you start trying to act right, folks start acting up. You remember that you and your wife was cool and y'all was happy, happy go dory and, and all of a sudden, you know, and all of a sudden the wife or either husband start going crazy. The minute that you make up your mind to live for the Lord, the devil closed up. Can I just talk to somebody? Now, unlike these football teams in this text, this young, and they got excited, but this young man became silent and he was disappointed. The Bible says he just walked away, Tara. He just walked away sad. He didn't go in a frenzy because he thought Jesus said something deep. He got silent and he walked away and says, that ain't what I want to hear. I ain't coming to hear that. I thought you were going to say something. I thought you were going to tell me, amen, something that I can do that I can inherit eternal life. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why the young man was so disappointed. The young man had placed more value on his treasure here on earth than the promise Jesus told him about he'll receive when he get to heaven. The young man said, listen, I got more value on what I got in my hand now. See, a bird in hand is better than two in the bush. The young man had placed more value on his treasures here on earth than those Jesus promised he will receive when he get there. No, I want mine now. You ever heard that? You, you, all of us got that now syndrome. I, I want my, it's my money and I want it. 
Can I talk to you? I'm just talking to people, and a whole lot of you you can can, can relate to this, but but some of you think y'all got some because y'all got some now. But can I tell you something? You can die tomorrow and then give it to the hooping cranes over there an hour. (laughs) Nothing you and I, you and I have on this earth is guaranteed for you to go anywhere. A man died one time. He said, when I die, he told his wife, I want everything that I, everything I work for, I want all of my money in my casket when I die. I want you for everything. She said, no, honey. She, she said, listen, when I die, I want everything, I want all of my bonds and my stocks, my cash, I want it in the casket when I die. So when he died to open the casket up, all of it was on top of him in, his, in, in, in the casket. An old deacon walked up, start, had a bag in his hand. The deacon walked up and started putting all the money in the bag. And he said, what are you doing? He said, I'm going to write him a check. <laughs> some of y'all will get that. Well, some, of y'all say, when? Yeah, some of y'all will get that in a few moments. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 19 says these words, Lay not up for yourself treasure upon earth, where moth and rust does corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. Have you ever had anybody to steal something from you? Something you worked for. Something that you laid before and somebody came and stole it from you. Make you feel violated. Come on, somebody. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where thieves, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. If you got your little, if you got your heart and your little money, if you got, if, if you, if you counting on your money, that's exactly where your heart is. And guess what? It'll break your heart if you lose it. You have to make sure that your heart is in the right place. And I, and as I look at this text, the young man thought Jesus was having issues with his stuff. Now you're going to tell me to sell my stuff. And he really thought Jesus was taking issues, Pastor Wolf, with his stuff. Jesus went after his stuff. But rather, he was after his heart. Come on, somebody. See, the one thing he was liking, it wasn't so much. He had dedicated, he had gave all of his stuff. Come on, somebody. Can I, I just want to talk to one person. This young man really felt that Jesus was after my stuff. And some of you come to church, and which if you give your $2 to the church, you think you're giving to Pastor John. You ain't giving me nothing. Come on, somebody. When you give your money to the, to the church, you're giving it to the Lord. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. And if you give any other reason, you should have kept your money in your pocket. Because you just, you just robbed yourself from it. <laughs> I start not to come here today. You know what, Vic? I start not to come today. Because I kind of figured he might go there. I'm already there. I'm standing in your back. I'm right there. I'm your, I'm your Amazon delivery man. <laughs> this was one thing that he liked, Eric. He had been given his stuff. He did that. He gave all of that. But the one thing that he liked, the one thing that God wanted was his heart. Because God know if I got your heart, I ain't worried about your stuff. Come on, somebody. When when God has your heart, your stuff is an offering to him. It's just an overflow. Priest, pastor, amen. Look at this. The Bible, we got to read them in Mark chapter 10, verse 21. It's about five words that we must not miss in Notice the first five words, and he took, he took it down real fast. Put it back up. Y'all see my ball here. Put it back up this one. Amen. 
Then Jesus, the, this in the first part of that verse, it says, then Jesus beholding him loved him. Then the New Living Translation says that looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. You know why he did that? You know why the Holy Ghost had that put it? And sometimes we'll gross over that. We'll read it real fast, but that was very powerful. Why did he say that? Why, why was the need to put those words there before the rest of the text? Jesus knew this young man really, really, really wanted to serve God, but he could not let go of his stuff. He really wanted to serve God, but he could not, especially when Jesus said to give that. And the Bible says Jesus loved him because he knew the young man was sincerely wanted to serve God, but he was stuck. Uh, it's harder. Come on, somebody. This <laughs> it's harder from this text to let go of your possession than trusting God for promises you must anticipate by faith. What, what, what do you say? It's harder to let go of things you already possess. You got it now. It's already in your hand. It's harder to let go of stuff you possess right now than trusting in promises you must anticipate by faith. I know I'm going to heaven, but I, I need something right now. <laughs> Remember, he walked off. He walked off. I mean, he walked off after Jesus made that first comment. And didn't wait around to hear what Jesus had to say next. Sometimes when somebody says, you ever, have you ever, when somebody says something, and I don't care what else they said, I said, you don't want to hear nothing. Some of y'all did me like that this morning already. <laughs> y'all just waiting for this, for Pastor Thompson to dismiss y'all. But he didn't stay around because what you initially said, was so offensive and so, just so, just so out of bounds that I don't care what you got to say to me afterwards. I don't want to hear it. Sometimes we get mad at people, even somebody, because they said something, because, or they did something, and you didn't give them time enough to explain why they did it, because what they did was enough for you to shut them off right then. Come on, somebody. You, ain't, you can't say nothing else to me, Larry, for what you said, but I didn't know that the reason you did that because maybe you seen some up the street. Come on, somebody. <laughs> or maybe there was something that I didn't see. If I'd have waited to, for you to explain to me, if I'd have waited around for you to explain why that was and why it may have looked offensive to me, but it wasn't, if I would have stood around and listened to the whole explanation. Some of you don't wait around to hear the whole story. All you know is he got this or she did that, but you don't give them enough time to explain because you don't know why people do certain things. Sometimes you don't know nobody's story. You, so you make judgment before you know why I act the way I do. You, you don't know, you know anything about, I, 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 you don't know why. You know, can I, I was in a barber shop yesterday and y'all know I coached part one of football for about 20 years. And I know a little bit about coaching boys. I little, know a little bit about discerning little boys because I did it for 20 years from, from, from down from eight years old all the way up to about 16 years old. And so I have a little idea about what to look for when I see a little boy playing. So a girl came to Bob shop yesterday and she brought a little pretty little girl in there. And I said, oh, she's so pretty. The girl said, she said, I said, what is your, she says, oh, she, she, oh, she cheerlead. I said, oh, I said, my wife cheerlead. My wife would love her. She was a cheerlead. She was getting her hair done. And she said, but I got a boy. God put you in the right place at the right time. There this mother was, even somebody, 
struggling with her little, come on somebody, her little nine-year-old boy. Because sometimes boys, especially when they move from nine to 12, they start, some juices start moving. They start acting crazy. And when you got a mother, don't know what, why them boys acting that way. Come on, somebody. That's why you need a man. You need, I ain't talking about no, 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 my, my baby daddy. I'm talking about you need a man. And as she was laboring with that, the Holy Ghost told me to pay attention to what she was saying. And she said, this, she says, my little boy, I said, uh, she said, because they had like a little Seminole shirt on, Seminole High School shirt on. I said, I went to Seminole High School. She said, oh, yeah? I said, yeah, I went to Seminole High School. Praise God, that's, that's, that's my school, right around Seminole. <laughs> she says, my son played Pop Warner for Seminole. I said, is that right? I said, I coached there for 20 years in Pop Warner football. And she said, my son, I, I said, do your son still play football? She says, no, because he have anger issues. I said, he have anger issues. She said, yeah, he have anger issues. And, and, and I, I made him quit because he can't get along with the coach. And he's a good football player, but he can't deal with the boys or the coach. I said, you don't like the boys or the coaches? <laughs> she said, no. And he, he has a quick temper. A quick temper. And I just can't. I just can't. And, and, he's a, and, you know, he's a good kid, but he just got these angry issues. This is a mother talking about her child. Yeah. I said, it's not the coach or the other kids. There's something deeper, come on, somebody, that's triggering those anger issues. Are y'all hearing me, somebody? Y'all hearing me? She said, well, the coach, when they have this anger issue, the coaches don't want to coach them. They don't want to deal with them. I said, that's just the kid I want when I'm coaching football. I want me a kid to get ticked off. I want me a kid... I cry when he miss a tack. I want me a kid because what I do, I get them, I get that energy. Come on, somebody. And I channel that energy. If he, if he like to fight and grab somebody, oh, I want him for a linebacker. <laughs> if he got issues that way he like to run, run off, come on, somebody. I want him for a running back. Come on, somebody. Y'all, y'all, y'all hearing me? And the lady now, she stopped. She's completely arrested by what I was saying. I said, now, I wish I, wish I was coaching again. I said, because I'll take that boy, even somebody, and I'll channel his energies and something. I said, because there's some triggers that's going on with him that need to, see, you don't know why I act the way I act. You don't know why I do. See, sometimes there's some things that trigger why I act the way I do. And, you, and until you know what that is, you better be careful about messing with me. Because sometimes you may hear the trigger. Come on, somebody. Amen. You don't mess with everybody just because they got on church clothes. Oh, Lord. I thought I hooped that to you a little bit. I thought I hooped that. You be careful because somebody may have some issues that, that you don't know nothing about. And maybe you might mess with something that may be a trigger. Somebody felt that. Somebody really felt that. The thing, though, that shocked me most was not the young man walking off or away from Jesus, but Jesus allowing him to do so. I'm talking about Jesus. I ain't talking about Pastor Jones. I'm talking about gentle Jesus, God in flesh. He that loves everybody. I'm not so shocked about the boy walking away, but what's really shocking is Jesus allowed him to do so. He's looking at him. Sincerely loved him. How can you sincerely love somebody and you let me walk off? <laughs> if you genuinely love me, how can you, how, how can you say you love me and you're going to tell How you say you're going to love me and you're going to let me walk off? And you don't even attempt to try to stop me. That ain't love. Come on, Vicky, that, that can't be love. You mean to tell me, no, you can't be telling me that you love me and you're going to let me walk off and don't try to stop me. At least Wayne say something. What kind of love is that? That you're going to let me walk off when you know I need to be there. 
How many women, praise God, you keep grappling, and the more you grapple at his feet, the further he get away. The more you try to keep him there, the further he start acting crazy. Let him walk. Put your weave on. Put some high heel shoes on. Take a bath somewhere. Get you some nice clothes and put your weave on and throw your hair. And you keep on moving. Let him walk. Pastor, I ain't gonna let her go. Uh uh. No, I ain't letting her go. You better let her go. You better let her walk. You better let, don't, don't let them threaten you. Uh uh. I, no, no. Because if you keep them, even hold them captive, you always have to keep the cage closed. Huh? What did you just say? If you hold them captive, you're going to always have to keep the cage closed. Checking the cell phone. Looking at the receipts. That's too much work. Dang, that's too much work. I wish I wouldn't have came here today because your pastor is crazy. Christ, there's some places in ministry, Pastor Wolf, and purposes in ministry only a few people are invited to serve in. There's some places and there's some, come on somebody, purposes in ministry that only a few people are invited to serve. Jesus Christ, not Peter, James, or John gave this young man in this text a personal invitation. I ain't talking about somebody else invited him. But Jesus Christ himself, looking at the young man, loved him. Knowing, because Jesus knew him before he come running. He even knew the deepness of his heart and what he really wanted. But Jesus also knew the trap he was stuck in. Jesus gave him a personal invitation to join him and his disciples in kingdom work. And he turned it down for worldly treasures and pursuits. <laughs> Beware of the monkey traps. I don't know if they're going to put it up there. But in Africa, they have a unique way of catching monkeys. Keep it up there. And what they do, they carve a hole just big enough for the monkey's hand to get into the hole. Just big enough for an open hand to get into the hole. But the monkey, with all of his greed, come on somebody, reaches his hands into the hole. And they would put little treats down in the hole or the coconut or gorge. And when the monkey reached in with an open hand to reach in to get the goodies, what he does is ball his fist. The natives just stand there watching it. Because they know a monkey's greed don't kill him. As long as I got my fist ball, this jaw gonna stay right here. They will put a chain on that coconut. Come on, somebody, y'all listen to me? Knowing the monkey is too dumb. Come on, somebody. See, some of you are so greedy. You are trapped with the very thing you think you can't live without. As long as I got my hands tight on what I got, I can't get free until I get to the place where I find out that what I got hold of, come on somebody, 
really got a hold on me. Y'all ain't listening to y'all. Y'all ain't want to hear nothing I got to say. But I cannot get my hands out of this jar unless I release what I think I got to have. In my office, I asked Camille, I said, Camille, get your hand full of candy. Camille reached her in because I know my hand was bigger than hers. And I said, Camille reaches, re, Camille, I said, Camille, ball your fists up now. She balled her fists up. I said, take, she said, I said, keep your hand ball. She said, I can't get my hand out. <laughs> Here's my question to you. What is it that you got a handful of? <laughs> What is it that you got a handful of, but it really got a handful of you? That you ain't finna let it up, you know, hell or high water, I ain't getting this up. As a section, when I do marriage counseling, section in my marriage counseling, there's a section that we use about personal preferences. And in that section, when I'm counseling personal people about the, in, that, in that one section, personal preferences, that is designed to get you, even somebody, to tell me, Tina, what your preferences are. Preferences are things that, that you like, hell or high water. When I get married, I ain't getting this up. When I get in this house, I want all my walls blue. Personal preferences. I've had two marriages counts, canceled because when I got to the section of called personal preferences, even some, somebody, personal preferences, I ain't driving nothing. If you want this, all of this, you're going to make sure you put me in a nice house, a nice car. I ain't driving nothing else. Those are my personal preferences. <laughs> I had two marriages because one girl stood and told me, she said, you told him to turn to the boy. And we were talking about some stuff. He's because his presence went down. He said, I don't care nothing about it. She said, I do. Uh And if you want this, you got to give up that. But he says, my personal preference is, I don't like what your personal preference is. (laughs) And we call it a day. Somebody say, watch the monkey traps. You better watch the monkey traps. Now, let me say something to the ones that are here. That God has given you a great privilege of serving him. But what your pursuits in life and your business or whatever you got going on is too important for you to serve the Lord. I would serve. See, you walking off. You put it down because this is getting in the way. Come on, somebody. Of what I got to do in my personal life. I'll come and do that later on. I ain't got time to be coming to this choir rehearsal all the time, Larry. Y'all, y'all, it's just, y'all got, this is just too much work. Y'all ain't hearing me. People are walking off from the things of God. Walking off and saying that I have some things I got to do for me. Not even knowing that what if he blow on what you think (laughs) is important. What if you lose the job? It can happen. You can have the job today and tomorrow somebody else can be in it. You can have the money today, but just one move of the market. It can be gone. What is it you got so you feel like it's too important for me to serve God? I'm going to put God on the back burner. Are you walking away too? You have dropped your head. And now some of y'all mad at me. And you walking off. But what I'm telling you is for your own good. The devil has set a trap for you. He has set a trap. And you better watch it. Praise God, the minute that you start putting earthly stuff over the things of God, what a privilege it was for that young man to serve the Lord. And yet and still, he turned the nose up at it because his worldly pursuits and possessions was more important 
Don't you know that every good and perfect gift comes from God? Don't you know that promotions come from God? It don't come from the east of the Lord. It came from God. What is wrong with you? Monkey traps. Somebody look at somebody and say monkey trap. Monkey traps. You caught in a monkey trap and don't even know it. I said, you better come on, because I ain't got enough trouble as it is. I'm in enough trouble as it is. Jesus said, Tara, he didn't hear. Deacon Jones, he didn't even stand around to hear what Jesus said at the very last part. He said, ain't nobody gave up anything for me and the gospel that they won't receive more right now. He said, boy, I don't want your stuff. I want you to know if you have stood there and listened to me, I wasn't going to even ask you for your stuff. I just wanted to see where your heart was. <laughs> I didn't want your stuff. He said, nobody has given up houses and lands and children and wives and that pretty fine wife you got. He said, I won't give you more. He said, I love money. You got your little 501. He said, what I'll do if you serve me? Come on, somebody. That job you got, that promotion, you think is a big deal? I'll make you over the company. But see, you walking off because you think that you have arrived. But there's still more. And yet and still, Jesus let him walk. When people walk off from us, we still have the mandate to love them anyway. And don't be offended. Let them walk. Let them walk. Because God has given every man the power of choice. You get to choose. So I'm not trying to make nobody feel bad now. Uh Uh-uh. Do you do you. Girl, you do you. Hey, bro, do you. If you choose to walk off from ministry and reject the invite to serve, go ahead and you do you. But my mandate is to make you know that I ain't mad at you. That's your choice. But just know, God could have had far more better for you if you'd have just waited. Everybody standing on your feet. Councils are coming. He said, I don't want to give you more in this life, but in the next life, I'm going to give you life, life eternal too. Is there somebody here? Why don't you give the Lord your life? Trust Him. He got everything else. But the one thing that he wants is your heart. If there's somebody who's never trusted the Lord, has never given the Lord your heart, I want you to come today and, and everybody Jesus called, he called them publicly. He never, when he died, he didn't die in no corner. He died publicly. If there's somebody who has never trusted the Lord and you want to come and give your life to the Lord, I want you to come. I want you to come, I want you to come and give your life to the Lord. Would you come? Would you, would you come? Is there anybody else that want to come? Come on. We'll, come on. We'll wait on you. We'll wait on you. Ask somebody to walk with you. I want to come, but I need somebody to walk with me. Turn to somebody and say, I'll walk with you if that's you. I'll walk with you if that's you. Anybody want to come that want to join this church? You're saved. Know you're saved and want to join this church. You can also come on, walk up in front of us and be a part of us. Come on. Come on, walk up here. Are you here? Are you here? You've been coming and you've been listening. Maybe you that's listening via the internet. Amen. Write us. I guarantee some out of my office will get in touch with you. If you want to join us or if you just want us to pray for you, we'll do that too. Write us and let us know that you was listening and you want to be a part of this. Amen. Anybody else want to come? Anybody else want to come?
these people here. If the sermon for nobody else, it was for you. Now, when he told me you won't be baptized, there's a reason why we get baptized. We get baptized because we put our faith in Jesus. And baptism means that, Lord, I publicly declare that I want you as my Savior and my Lord. Are you saying that? I want you to pray this prayer. I want you to pray this prayer publicly with me. He got it. You just take my hand. Just take my hand. I want you to pray this prayer. I want you to close your eyes, shut us all along. And I want you to mean this from your heart. Say, Father, Father in, Jesus name, in Jesus' name, I come today, I come today to, thank you to thank you and praise you, and praise you for, this privilege for this privilege that I have today, that I have today to, publicly to publicly declare to you, declare to you I need you in my life. I want you in my life. I want you in my life. Forgive me, Forgive me for, every sin for every sin I've ever committed. I ever committed. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And today, and today I, accept I accept Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ as, my Savior as my Savior and my Lord. And, my Lord. and, I, believe and I believe in my heart, in my heart God, God, he died. He died. You raised him from the dead. He from the dead. And he's alive. And, he's alive. and, today, and today, he's my Savior, he's my Savior and my Lord. And now today I can say, and now today I can say I'm, saved I'm saved from this day, from this day forward. forward. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Come on, somebody. Come on, come on, girl. Come on, give her a hug. Come on. Come on, y'all. Lord, come on, we just do. Come on, the Bible says, heavens rejoice over one sinner that repentance. Okay, I tell you what we're going to do to make sure you're 100% yeah. saved. Yeah. We're going to pray for you, brother, too. Right. Amen. Yeah. Let me hold your hand. Let me hold your hand. Let, let, let him get your glasses, get your glasses right here. Amen. He said he want to be sure. He want to be sure. Amen. Let me hold your hand. Give me, give me. Okay. And pray this prayer. Mean it from your heart. It says, Father. Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Sometimes, sometimes we go through things. We go through things to make us to make us see, see what we need. What we need. And I need you. I need you in my heart. In my heart. I need assurance. I need assurance that I'm saved. That I'm saved right now. Right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. For everything. For everything. And every sin. Every sin I've ever committed. Ever committed. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I accept you, Jesus. I accept you, Jesus. As my Savior. As my Savior. And my Lord. And my Lord. And right now. And right now. I believe. I believe. I'm a child. I'm a child. Of God. Of God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Can we get some men up here? Can we get some men? Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, would some of you guys go back there with the Claire? Would y'all take him back and whoop, would y'all go back there and love him for me? Amen. Love him. Come on, give him a hand, y'all. Give him a hand. Just remain on your feet. Just remain. For, we're gonna. We're gonna. What we got? Somebody else. Somebody want some prayer too? Yes. Amen. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay. He's having problem with his vision. Amen. Where my. Where my all. Where my all. Take a lesson for a minute. Ain't no magical portion in here. And I don't even know what God's going to do. I'm just believing by faith. He, he still heals. I want you to close your eyes. I want to anoint your eyelids. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. 
Father, in Jesus' name, I rebuke this infirmity, God, in his the name of Jesus. And God, in Jesus' name, I'm asking God that you would give him vision back. Lord, you did it, Jesus. And God, and we're in you. God, we know that you still heal just because you're not here visibly. We know that you hear God in the name of Jesus. And I pray for his eyes in the name of Jesus. And I pray that God, you will heal his eyes in the name of Jesus. I give you praise and I give you glory for his eyes. And God, I'm asking Jesus' name that God, you will bring his eyesight back to him and make it clear in the name of Jesus. God, I think and I give you praise in the name of Jesus. I give you praise and I give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen and amen and amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Just trust him and believe him, Lord. Trust and believe him. Trust and believe him. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Well, I tell you, somebody say prayer changes things. And so we know that just a little talk with Jesus can make everything all right. And so we continue to trust in God and continue to believe God, uh, you know, for everything in our lives. Amen. Amen. Because the best is yet to come and it's just a conversation away well super wednesday is coming up give the lord a hand clap because we've been fasting and seeking the lord the bible says if we draw near to god he'll draw near to us on wednesday night 124 that's january 24 2024 that's going to be this wednesday we will give way for individuals in the congregation to share a part of their journal entries from the 21 day fast we're about 14 days in we have seven more to go and so uh, special events and mother jones and her team will also be taking not demanding but taking those who want to give entries uh, from your journals that would like to share um, to be used and published in a scrapbook so special events will only be able to accept these uh, entries until February 4th, 2024. Amen. So we've seen quite a few people come out on this Wednesday, and we want even more to come out on this Wednesday as we close out um, this fast and expecting God uh, to do great things. Amen. Let us look into the Lord. Well, God, we thank you. We, we bless you, Lord God, when we appreciate you, God. We just thank you, Lord God, for your purpose, Lord, for your plan, God, for our lives. And thank you, God, uh, for all of us, Lord God, that are here on this morning. Each and every seat, Lord God, each and every place, Lord, that is here, each and every person. We thank you, God, for each and every one. We thank you, God, that you know the plans and the purpose, Lord God, that you have for each one. We thank you, God, and we give you praise for that. And we thank you, God, for the work, God, that you have begun in each of our lives that have accepted you. And we thank you, God, that you who have begun this good work in our lives. We thank you, God, that you will continue to complete it, Lord God, until the day of Jesus Christ. So we thank you, God, that whatever situation we may face today, we thank you, God, that whatever trial or situation that we may face today, we thank you, God, that even this situation, Lord God, is working together for our good. We thank you, God, that you're in the midst of the situation, Lord God, bringing us, Lord God, to where you would have us to be. 
So we thank you, God. We thank you for hearing prayer today. We thank you, God, for miracles, Lord God. We thank you, God, for signs, God. We thank you, God, for wonders, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God, that this is, Lord God, and will continue to be, Lord God, a place, Lord God, for you to minister by your spirit, that it would be a house, a home, Lord God, for miracles, Lord God, signs, Lord God, and wonders, Lord, for you to perform, God, for your glory. Lord, we thank you, God, and we just give you praise today. We thank you, God, and we just give you praise today, God. Just move, Lord God, and have your way. And we thank you, God, that your goodness and your mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we will dwell with you forever. We bless you, God, and we give you glory. We give you praise and we worship you on today, God. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you for hearing prayer today. We thank you for restoration. We thank you for healing. In the name of Jesus, amen. See you guys on Super Wednesday this Wednesday. Come on out, 7 p.m.